Hey there, Warhammer Warriors, and welcome back to the War Academy, where I give you the cheat codes, but without all the guilt. Some people struggle with Warhammer or take longer to learn than others, and we're going to try to fix that. So prepare yourselves for a journey into the world of min-maxing in Warhammer 40k. Because today, we're all about squeezing every ounce of power out of our tiny little plastic soldiers as we can. And let's dive into the world of min-maxing in Warhammer. We'll get you prepared to unleash the most ridiculously overpowered armies, break the game, and leave your opponents wondering if you sold your soul to the dice gods. <laughs> and first, we need to start with, what exactly is min-maxing? So min-maxing is when you spam one type of defense profile. When you mix that defense profile with something that's completely different, it doesn't mesh very well and you've basically got pudding in your mashed potatoes so if you're playing a game like dungeons and dragons or Baldur's Gate or whatever and you have a crazy really strong warrior you might it might not be a good idea to put intelligence on him because you want to min max that strength and constitution so we can do the same thing in warhammer 40k and by spamming that same defense profile it ensures you know what you need to be targeting in each game so if you have an army that's nothing but vehicles, you know, oh, I have to kill everything that's anti-vehicle in my opponent's army, and I can basically win. Versus if you had a bunch of different things all mixed up together, you need to kill the anti-vehicle, need... it's all a threat to you. When you're able to pick out the most dangerous things to your army that your opponent has, it's gonna exhaust him incredibly quickly. When people get exhausted in Warhammer, when the, when the attrition rate's just getting too high, they start to make really desperate. When they start to use stratagems, they start to do more Hail Marys which actually gets you ahead even further. I cannot stress enough how important it is to understand this concept when you're playing Warhammer 40K. It applies to every single army. It applies to every single unit. This also lets you go really off meta and you can use almost any model you want. Whatever you think is the coolest model, you can make it meta by sticking to this outline. Before we really deep dive into this, for, for Dice Karma's sake, make sure you like and subscribe, guys. Like and subscribe right now. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Scruffy believes in this company. <laughs> so what does min-maxing actually look like? Well, the, the most common one that you're probably used to is knights. So knights, if you're new to Warhammer 40K and you have a friend that plays knights, there's a good chance that you and your other new friends to Warhammer 40K are all losing to him over and over and over again. In my opinion, knights aren't that great of an army but they do something really really well which is they're incredibly easy to min max that you pretty much can't not min max them like if knights could take infantry or if they could take you know basic primary space marines or something they would be weaker they'd be easier to deal with because your guns that aren't good against knights actually have something to shoot at and any knight player that has more than a couple games under his belt knows to just go for the enemy anti-tank and if he's playing against an army that he's not even familiar with he'll just ask his opponent hey what's your best anti-tank stuff can you point to it and be like okay that's the stuff i need to kill and i win so like i mentioned when you when you go to make an army you need to pick that one defense profile and completely spam it so and that's how you're going to shut down just large large portions of the enemy guns if you've got nothing in your army but Gravis Marines that all have three wounds and toughness six. Like you have no fear of anything that's strength five and lower. Like heavy bolters aren't even that scary to you unless they have a lot of rerolls. However, something like a last cannon, it's gonna wound you on twos, go through most of your armor, and unless you have a four up invuln, it's probably gonna kill you as long as it doesn't roll a one on its damage. But if you took mostly Gravis stuff and then you have a couple two wound Primaris squads floating around, suddenly the heavy bolters of your opponent's army become good. Suddenly they become a threat. So without doing this, you're not you're not going to have a clear path of attack. But by min-maxing, you know exactly what needs to be taken out. You need to make those last cannons shoot at infantry. You need to make those machine guns shoot at your tanks. If that's happening, you're doing it right. So there are only really four types of armies in all of 40k. It's there's you know there's I think 34 different factions you can play, but there's really only four armies in the game. There are infantry spam lists where every single thing in the list has one to two wounds. Usually it's going to be toughness four or lower. You're just throwing as many bodies on the board as possible and hoping that your opponent just doesn't have enough dice to deal with you. 
Then there's a heavy infantry and light vehicle builds. So this heavy infantry and light vehicle builds could have a sprinkle of heavy vehicles in it, but it's mainly trying to focus on MSU, lots of units that all require last cannons or anti-tank weapons to actually take out. So these are gonna be things with three or more wounds and toughness six or higher. So anything Gravis or bigger basically. And then there's the light and heavy vehicle or monster build where everything just has tons of toughness, everything has high wounds. You're not mixing any infantry and you're just spamming big, huge, tough, tanky shit and gonna annihilate your opponent's anti-tank guns. But there's also one more type and that's the hybrid build. So the hybrid build, uh, orcs do it probably the most well-known. Um, Tau can do it with like a heavy fish of fury build where they use the devil fish, but you're using trap uh, transports and your army is all vehicle at the beginning. And there's basically nothing in your army is gonna be weak to any infantry guns. But then as the game progresses, you can start to unload your transports and switch into an infantry army. And you can kind of hold on to them if you want to stay more vehicle and then transform into the infantry when it's time. So you have the choice of, do I go for my enemy, my enemy's anti-tank guns or his anti-infantry guns? Whichever is the better choice is the one you're going to attack. Right now, we're having it out. Let's go. Come on, come on. So I think why a lot of people don't do this is a lot of people don't put their mind in the mind of their opponent. You need to see the game from your opponent's eyes and make life as difficult as possible for him as you can. So let's say your opponent has a take all comers list and he's got these four things split up in 25%, like one fourth of his army is anti-infantry, one fourth is anti-elite, anti-large, anti-light and heavy infantry, etc. So if you are nothing but large, almost 75% of his army is struggling into your army right out the gate. And if your opponent, say your opponent brought 400 points of anti-tank and you brought nothing but infantry, basically 400 points of his army is useless and the game hasn't even started yet. So you're just playing 1600 points versus your 2000 points right out the gate. But if you had that same army and you decided to, oh, I really wanna take this couple squads of tanks in with your infantry army suddenly his anti-large and anti-tank stuff is just hurting you really bad and you if you only brought two tanks there's good they might even be gone first turn you might get to use them once at most and then they're gonna die because his anti-tank has nothing else to shoot at and you're focusing on killing all of his anti-infantry stuff If you're new to collecting Warhammer, you really need to pick one of these themes because if you're buying infantry and then you're splashing in tank, you're just gonna fall a little bit behind all the other people that started playing before you. So think of this video as a buying guide too. And we're gonna start with how do you make an infantry themed army? And like I said before, infantry is just as many one to two wound models as you possibly possibly can you don't need to spam just the same model you need to spam the same defense profile so here's one of my armies that's been doing really well so if you notice it's all infantry there is one unit of gravis in there but they will deep strike down and do their shenanigans if my opponent brought last game i don't need to worry about that i just need to worry about the things that kill two wound marines because everything besides those inceptors is toughness four or lower in this army there is a dark shroud in there but that just hides the entire time like i mentioned before if the opponent took 700 points of anti-tank which is reasonable and 500 points of anti-infantry i just gotta kill that 500 points of stuff and i'm gonna overwhelm him Weaknesses with an infantry themed army though is obviously your anything that's got a high volume of low strength attacks, a blast weapons are usually a pain in the ass. Things with rerolls. So if there's a if the anti-infantry guns that get access to rerolls can get real painful real fast. The other downside too is that there's a surprising amount of armies that can actually hurt you in melee with their basic close combat weapons. But you're incredibly resistant to anything that's expensive, high damage, what you're just really resistant to expensive models in general. The protection that any infantry army is gonna rely on is it's good armor on high numbers or bad armor on even higher numbers. And just don't mix putting in your mashed potatoes, guys. So this is the two other big problems I see with people when I try to help them get better at 40K that 
I just, I seem to struggle at getting this through people's heads. How do I reach these kids? So there's this weird human emotion that I just refer to as chipmunking. And you might do it when you're, when you're buying a car and you think, oh, I really want a red car. And you find the perfect car, but it's not red. So you don't buy it, even though it was the perfect car, but it just needed to be red. Even though red doesn't, unless you're an orc, like it doesn't do anything. And you just lost out on a good car because you chipmunked. So in Warhammer, people do this too. So you might have your perfect infantry army and you're doing everything right. It's all infantry, all infantry. And then you got 300 points left and you're like, hmm, I love my super good painted tank and I need to use that. And you just feel like it has to be in your army because you love the model. Even though if you add it to your army, all it's gonna do is get its ass kicked. It's gonna get destroyed and humiliated. So if you love the model, you're just gonna put it in a really embarrassing moment. It's most likely not gonna do anything because it's in the wrong army. And it's gonna make you spend the next three hours and another person's three hours. And you're just gonna throw the game and waste. It's like you could have just used him in the army that people act like it's the last game of 40K they're ever gonna play. And they have to use all of their favorite stuff. There's future games, people. And you can use that awesome model in another game. It just doesn't belong in every single army you make. Honestly, you're wasting your time and you're wasting another person's time. Like, game face, bro. I don't know what that human emotion is called. There, it might be, there might be a word for, I just call it chipmunking. It makes no sense and I just made it up on the spot. It has nothing to do with chipmunks. But wait, there's more. The other thing that I see people do all the time that drives me freaking nuts. People seem to think that using a doubled up squad with a leader is somehow better than just using two minimum squads. It is not that way, people. If I have two squads of three blade guard, I will beat your one squad of six with a freaking leader. I don't care what your leader is. It just, you're doubled up. You have less actions. You're more susceptible to blast. You're harder to hide. You're easier to kill. You're more likely that I'm not gonna overkill you. You're more likely to overkill me. There's a huge, huge list on why my two three-man blade guard, which are 66% the cost on average of what your six man with a leader is, will beat you and is better than you in every single circumstance. The only reason that you will really double up a squad in 40k, unless you're Chaos or Necrons, is you've already taken three of that unit and you wanna take a fourth one. Or you have an amazing stratagem that you're gonna be using and it's just not worth it to use it on such a small squad. Something like Chaos Obliterators and their Mark of Nurgle loan op thing. But please stop sending me lists that have a doubled up squad for no freaking reason. Aside from very specific armies, this is not the addition for Hero Hammer. Heroes are attacks, and we don't like paying taxes, so you try to just pay as little as you can and then get on to making your army. That's why most Space Marine lists you're seeing just have a plain lieutenant in it, and then the rest of it is actual army that does things. Sorry, rant over. Let's talk about heavy infantry and vehicles. So these are the lists that are just gonna laugh at your opponent's heavy bolters. They are focusing on removing anything that's anti-tank, anything that has reroll wounds, anything that has high AP. Now remember, when you make these lists, every, what I'm talking about here has to apply to every single unit. So my unit. If it applies to, if it doesn't apply to a unit in your arm, it's pretty much dead. And I spoke ahead of my slide, look at that. If you use any infantry, they will be removed so easily because those heavy bolters have something to shoot at and you're not targeting the heavy bolters. Remember, look at the game from your opponent's perspective, not your own perspective. So the weakness is to someone that's spamming these things and anything that you have is high damage. Anything that's high AP, high strength, and rerolls wounds. Just like what they need to be going for. That's their only real weaknesses. They're incredibly resistant to any low damage weapons, low strength weapons, and usually low AP weapons. Their main protections, they rely on invulns to become resistant to that anti-tank stuff. They have, uh, some of them can use feel no pains or damage reductions. So uh, other times they'll put in a transport to give them that extra shield. And this is where you can mix a little bit of the pudding with your mashed potatoes as long as it's in a transport. So you can take some basic Marines, put it in a transport when all the, when it's safe to come out, then you can do your thing. 
but you're in disguise as a vehicle. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. So before I end this video, here's just some other little things to keep in mind. Is main thing is when you go to play against somebody, even if you think you know their army, just ask them what's your best anti-tank stuff. Is that you know how good at anti-tank is this? You really need to know what your opponent's dangerous things are, and the best way to do that is just to ask. Here's a weird unit. So Terminators, especially Deathwing Knights. Terminators actually count as every single category as long as they're on the, the cheaper terminators so think about it if you're trying to be resistant to anti-infantry weapons what's the best defense against anti-infantry stuff generally it's a two-up save and if you're trying to be resistant to anti-tank stuff like what's the most general defense against anti-tank stuff it's going to be a four-up involve a lot of times terminators have a two-up save. well they always have a two-up save but then if you give them a four up in Vaughn, suddenly they're actually resistant to every single thing in the game. It does flip. There is an equal and opposite reaction where if you're resistant to everything in the game, you kind of weak to everything in the game as well. So yeah, I kind of give them a slide. They're basically resistant to everything, which is pretty cool. And that lets them support vehicle lists and infantry lists. So I kind of hit on this before, but yeah, Gravis count as light tanks, but Chosen, chosen for chaos space marines they count as infantry and that comes down to their toughness when you fight against a huge horde of chosen which i have a very many times almost every gun in your entire army is good against the chosen especially those even your bolt gun is going to have an opportunity to actually do some damage here but the toughness of the gravis makes it so you can't shoot those weapons into those same units and expect the same results even though they have both have three wounds and they're both basically a giant marine running at you so yeah, Chosen need to be in a Rhino to count as a vehicle. So before I end this video, here's what's cool about Warhammer, in my opinion, is it doesn't really change. The armies stay the same every edition. We just slightly change the units that we use in them. So here's a list of a lot of the armies that I've been playing since around the third edition and on. Like These armies haven't changed. Their theme stays the same and I build to it every edition, I just slightly tweak it. Feel free to steal any of these names if you like them. Make sure you check out part one of this video because you combine this video with that video and that's when you're hitting a higher level of play. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really want to get your PhD in Warhammer, then stop by my Patreon for awesome strategy cards as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching. Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. And I will see you in the next video. Enjoy the music.